Hi, this is Jay. Welcome to my channel. We've been going over all my AT gear that I'm taking with me on my through hike and I've been going in each group in detail and today it's time for the close. So come back after the intro. So how you see me is basically how you're going to see me if you see me on trail. I've been wearing this shirt when it's cooler weather. Usually I wear a t-shirt if it's about 55 Fahrenheit or more. Uh, but lowered that down to 30, I'll be wearing this shirt and I might have another jacket over it, depends on the sun and the wind. But for the most part, it's this REI button down. It's, it's an older shirt. Uh, I was wondering if I should get a new one because this might wear out, but I don't even know the name, name of the model. They don't, I don't think they sell it anymore, but I did buy it in 2017. So it's pretty old. There are a couple of buttons sewn on with floss, but I think it's going to hold up for the rest of the trip and if it doesn't I'll just buy a new long sleeve shirt. But it's been with me through so much that uh, I definitely have to bring it with me. It doesn't even smell anymore. You wash it enough and not bad. And I do like the design of this shirt. They don't have the vents on the side. They have a vent up here and that helps some of the heat escape right out because the heat kind of rises and shoots right out. So. I've worn this shirt throughout the entire PCT. Maybe I didn't wear it all the time, but I had it with me and often if it was cold, I did wear it like up in Washington and the Sierra, I had this on most of the time. And I also carried it with me. Every time I go on a backpacking trip, I prefer to carry one t-shirt and one long sleeve shirt with me just in case the weather changes. And this is a long sleeve shirt. So if it gets a little colder, I'll take the t-shirt off and put this long sleeve shirt on and go if it gets warm, I'll roll it up. If it gets too warm, I'll swap out to the t-shirt. But that's just the way I've been going, so I'll continue on that. Another reason I prefer having a long sleeve shirt with me all the time is because of the sun, of course. On the PCT, I wore a long sleeve for a while after I burned, sunburned my arms. It was pretty bad looking, so I was glad I had a long sleeve shirt. And then on the Arizona Trail, I thought it was going to be like, oh, I survived the Mojave Desert, I'll be fine. But on the Arizona Trail, for some reason, the sun was a lot stronger. So I was glad I wore a long sleeve shirt. And in fact, I hiked the whole trail with a long sleeve shirt, partly because of the cold, but partly just so I don't get burned too badly. On the AT, I'm not too worried about getting sunburned, but it's mostly for the cold and maybe bucks. We'll see. You can't see it in this view, but for my legs, I am wearing a convertible pants by Columbia. They're the Silver Ridge pants. I bought new ones because the ones I wore in the PCT I bought when I was a little bigger, so it's really loose and it, there's a lot of extra material on the waist and it causes hot spots. So I thought I'd size down a little and now I got this and I do like the convertible legs because when you're hiking in snow, your pants will get wet, but usually below the knee. So when you get to camp, and you're gonna go, go to sleep. If you wanna wear pants, it's best to just take off the calf part and just hang it somewhere like in your trekking pole straps or in the mesh along your tent, just so it dries a little. If it's too cold, it's never gonna dry. Just ball it up and just stuff it somewhere so it doesn't freeze too much. If you can, keep it next to your sleeping pad. Um, that way you're not touching it, but there's a chance it may not freeze because it's right there. Even if it freezes though, it's pretty easy to just put on. You just kind of shake it up a bunch and then they'll be pliable enough to put on. But the rest of your pants will be dry and that's why I prefer it. The below parts will also get dirty when it's muddy, but the parts above the knee are clean. So I will be sticking with the Columbia Convertible Pants, smaller and a different color and no more burn holes in it. Believe it or not, one of the reasons I like these convertible pants is I wore them in Wisconsin on my very first backpacking trip ever and they had that little fold that goes over the zipper and there were ticks everywhere. It was horrible. There's so many ticks constantly. I see them on my legs and when I got back to my car I noticed that there were just a ton of ticks just in the fold of the zipper. I don't know if any got through. I don't think so because none got me but uh, within the fold there were just a whole bunch of dead ticks. My pants were treated with permethrin, so they managed to get up that far. And I think they couldn't figure out how to get around the fold. So they just got caught in there and they died. But I think the fold really it helps prevent the ticks from climbing all the way up. Just as 
like another layer where they get stuck. So it's like a weird thing, but maybe it works, who knows. I did consider buying thicker pants that are convertible, so just be warmer in the winter time. But I thought it's just gonna be much heavier if you're not wearing the long pants. Cause even if it's about 45 degrees, I'd rather hike in shorts. And I was looking at the weather and it seems like some of the highs are in the higher 40s for a while. And I'd rather not carry much heavier long pants than these really light thin ones. And on top of this, if it's cold, I'll be hiking with this on. It's a Melanzana fleece I got just this year in 2021 or last year. And uh, on trail, I'll tell you all about how I obtained one. It's not my ideal color. It's a little brighter than I was hoping for, but it fits and I did get it before they did the whole reservation thing. So yeah, I'll tell you all about it later, but this is how it looks. Here it is. It's very soft. I don't know if you've ever felt one before, but Honestly, I can't compare it to the other fleeces out there on the market, but it's very soft. It's uh, it's really warm, it's light because there's no zipper, there's nothing to maintain that might break on you. I do like the kangaroo pouch where your hands just go all the way through. And I do like that this has a nice hood and when you're sleeping, you can zip up. It doesn't stay up the whole time, but it'll at least cover your mouth. And then you could use other things to cover everything else so, up. But when it's really cold, this would be an ideal way to hike. Just to, it makes a seal away from your neck, so it's just all covered up. And I'll also have another hat on if it's really cold, but I think this is gonna be great. I was joking that I think this will be completely destroyed by the end of the AT, because odds are I'm just gonna wear this all day and then all night. So. This is uh, pretty much what I'll be wearing most of the time, I think, at least in the first couple months. We'll see. Now for my sleeping clothes. Yeah, there was no sleeping clothes on my lighter pack list because I don't ever bring any. I just sleep in this. So this is the way it happened on most of the PCT, actually all of the PCT <laughs> and all of the Arizona Trail and Wonderland Trail and everywhere is I'll just wear a shirt, a hike, and then when I get to camp, while I do my chores, the shirt dries off and then I just go to sleep in it. Um, it hasn't been too bad. I usually wear shorts and then I'll use like little towels to clean off my legs, my arms, my neck, my face and everything. And I just sleep in the same clothes that I hiked in all day. Generally, when I leave town that morning, all the clothes I put out to leave, I'm pretty much gonna wear that until I take a shower. <laughs> So it's just going to be the same clothes. It's it's not too stinky. I don't know. You get over it. I always joke that, you know, you start smelling on the first couple of days, but by the third day you stop smelling. So it's okay, right? But yeah, I will sleep in this. It's just soft. So I have no plans on just taking it off. I found in wintertime hiking, like don't let yourself sweat too much. And then you won't have such a wet shirt when you get to camp. Just take off your layers as you go. If you know there's a big climb, take off like your fleece and just wear a long sleeve shirt. And then when you're at the top, put it back on. I know it's a lot of times you gotta take your pack on and off, on and off, but it's just the best way to maintain the moisture. Your shirt may still get a little wet, but on the way down, it'll all dry off pretty easily. So no big deal. This is the my plan for sleeping. If for some reason I get this shirt, and my fleece soaking wet. I have my short sleeve t-shirt, which is the Solomon. I don't even know the name of the model. They stopped making the one I have, but it's a synthetic, but they treated it with polygene. And what that is, it's an antimicrobial agent that basically keeps it from smelling too badly. On the PCT, I wore a similar shirt the entire time. And the only time I felt it had an odor at all was right where the backpack shoulder pads were. I think the shoulder pads were what had some of the bacteria growing on it, but the shirt itself, otherwise they'd really smell free. So I got another Solomon Polygene treated shirt and hopefully that'll last me the rest of the trip. If everything got wet, I would just wear this and my puffy and just sleep in the quilt. And that should be enough to keep me warm. I'm a very warm sleeper so I prefer to cold and I can sleep with less than most people I think so 
I'm not too worried, but this is a yeah, basically my backup shirt, this and the Torrid. But once it gets warmer, I'll look forward to wearing this, and then this will become my backup shirt. For my hat, I have basically just a trucker's hat. Just has a Marine Corps emblem on it. Nothing special, just a trucker hat. I like the vent on the back, just so it stays cool. I don't like it when it's solid material, so it just, well, just nicer. There's not much to that, <laughs> so. Now down towards my feet, I have several choices in socks. Generally though, I prefer to hike in Njinji. They're the hiker thickness in crew length, just over the ankle. But they're just soft enough that you don't need anything else and they're not like line or thin. So I just wear these. They're basically these finger toes. You've probably seen everyone else using them. Of course, somebody recommended, hey, why aren't you using darn tufts? or have you heard of Darn Tufts? But of course I started the PCT with Darn Tufts. Then of course I got blisters on the balls of my feet, both feet, and by, I forget what mile, but it was Casa de Luna. I was basically, every morning I had to cut up a little piece of KT tape and just cover up all the hot spots and blistered areas. And I think it was like five pieces a foot sometimes in the mornings and it just, it was a huge chore. And by the night, at the nighttime, I would just take it all off. So in the morning, I had to do it again. It was just over and over. So sometime well before the Sierra, I finally switched to Njindis and changed my life. I tried the liners first and I wore darn tufts with that. But I found it was so thin, it did help stop the blisters on the ball of my feet. But the toes, in between the toes, it's still kind of pinched. So I thought, Maybe if I use a thicker one, there'll be a little more cushion between the toes and they'll stop it. And ta-da, Njinji Hiker Thickness. It solved the problem with the balls of my feet as well as the blisters in the toes. And I just use it all the time. I love these. And that's why I carry three with me on the trail. Plan is I'll just keep one as a backup and just use two to rotate through. I'll generally hike two or three days and then switch to the other one. On the AT, there's a lot more town stops. So I'll probably hike two days and then switch to the other one. And then the last one is just as a backup. Cause sometimes in Jinjis are hard to find and I don't wanna be stuck in a situation where I'm waiting for just socks to show up in town. And as you can see, they're all different colors. I prefer different colors because they have a left, right. And if you have four or two pairs that are the same color, You'll have to pick one up and look at it and go, is that the right one? Is that the left one? But here, when I reach down in my bag, because I just throw everything in my compactor bag, I'll look down and I just look for the matching colors and that's a pair. I don't have to think left, right, and I'm ready to go. So three different ones and then some other socks coming up. I bought these maybe in Bishop, I don't know, but they're waterproof socks. I use them on the PCT. I bought them because of snow. And then on the Arizona trail, I thought, oh, it's gonna be super dry. I don't need these. So I wound up buying a different pair of waterproof socks in Arizona and had them shipped to a trail angel who hosted me for a few days. But I love waterproof socks. There's always an argument of pros and cons and if people are gonna bring them or not. But I don't wear them just to keep my feet dry because I figure if it's warm enough like that, it's just my feet are going to sweat. And these are actually lined with merino wool on the inside. So it keeps it pretty odor resistant. It's pretty good. But in the winter time, they're awesome because you just, if there's snow, somehow the snow always lands on the top of your foot and then it just melts in. And there's always, once it gets warm enough where that's some of it's mel melting, there's ice cold puddles everywhere, just lakes of it. And it's nice having waterproof socks and you can just walk through it, no worries. You can't really skirt around the puddles because they're everywhere. There's snow everywhere and there's embankments on the sides. So you can't go up because it's slippery because it's snow. You don't want to go down because it's slippery. So I found waterproof socks to be perfect. And I love them for winter. So I'm definitely taking these. These are the deck shell. Uh, they're pretty waterproof. I found that some people who 
give it really bad reviews, they keep thinking like you can go swimming in them or something. But if water gets over the top of this, water is going in there and it's going to take a long time to dry. So don't go in water higher than this. It's a rather short sock. The one I bought in Arizona was a little taller, but I'm going to go with these. They're just because of the merino wool inner, it'll help control the smell. And I think I'll be wearing these a lot more than I did the Arizona Trail. But of course, if I just wore these, I would get blisters and balls in my feet again. So I have these. These are two liners, two sets of liners. I wish I can get them in different, different colors that are the same material. But these are brand new because I go through them pretty quickly. I have a theory as to how they work to help stop blisters and balls of my feet. If you have blisters on the balls of your feet, this is the answer. I think when you put these on, these wind up gripping in your toes. And basically, as you walk, if you generally get a hot spot on the ball of your foot, the socks hold on and the socks move with your foot and not your foot sliding on the sock. And because of that, you don't get blisters on the ball of your feet, but all my injinjis will get holes right in the balls of the feet. I have found these will only last up to 200 miles. So that's why I have two pairs in case I have trouble finding them. But about 200 is all I can go on these before they generally get a hole in it. Once they get a little hole in it, it might be okay. But as the hole gets bigger, there's a little bit of fabric there that folds and it'll create a hot spot. And then they're no, no good anymore. And you have two pair of, well, you have a pair, but you can't use, you can't swap them. Left is left, right is right. You could try to invert it, but then the stitching and everything's all weird. I wouldn't do that. I would just toss them and your priority is the through hike. So what's $10 of liner socks, right? I mean, it's kind of wasteful to just use them for 200 miles and toss them, but I don't want any blisters. These hiker thickness socks, they will last me about 500 miles before they too will get a hole right in the ball of the foot area. Both feet too, it's not just one. So that's why I carry three because these are all new, but they, they may last me maybe 600 miles, 700 miles because I'll be mixing it up with the waterproof socks and the liner. But uh, I can tell you they're not gonna last halfway. I'm absolutely sure by mile 800, I'm gonna have to throw away one of these socks and then go to another. Maybe I'll just carry two. I don't know, but yeah, I love Jinji socks and uh, that's the way I'm going to go. I will tell you that uh, Darn Tufts do have a good odor control because of the merino wool, but these do not. So just be aware of that. If you looked at my lighter pack clothes list closely, you would have noticed that uh, I don't have any underwear listed. Yeah, no underwear. I found that the, I prefer boxers, and I found that the boxers, the ex officio boxers, weighed more than running shorts. So I just bring two running shorts, and they're basically my underwear. I wear them underneath my pants, and then if it gets hot, I just take my pants off, and my shorts are already on, and I could just keep walking. So super nice, right? And then I also sleep, in the, sleep with this most of the time, because most of the time I don't like to wear the pants to sleep because they're a little tighter. They don't stretch as much. They're not as comfortable. So down to at least freezing, I would just wear shorts and a shirt. Generally, I wouldn't wear the pants at all. But these are the Brooks Sherpa shorts. They've changed quite a lot over the years, just the design and the pockets and everything. But one thing has been consistent, I found. I just bought another pair is the inseam area. Hopefully it's not stained or anything, but basically see the double inseam right here. It's because there's a piece of fabric here. There's no seam down the middle. So there's actually a piece of fabric that goes the entire width of the leg. And that's nice because your inner thigh is going to rub against this and it just feels nice, smooth fabric, no stitching, no fabric clumps. It's just nice smooth fabric and I never get hot spots there. When I ran marathons, I switched to Brooks. I used to wear Nikes as well because they have shorts like these. And one time I tried a 
different pair of shorts that did have the stitching there. And uh, anything over like 10 miles, I would get shaping there. So, and I go right back to these type and nothing. So these are my favorite pair of shorts. And I just have two. Generally, when I leave town, I'll have one. And I, again, basically never take it off until I come to town again. But I have a second just in case accidents might happen, you know, just in case. But yeah, and these are basically be my hiking pants once it warms up which is about 45, 50 degrees, because my legs are warm when I hike, but yeah, that's it. Like everybody, I'll also have a Cedar Summit head net that's uh, treated with the insect shield, but I don't think, I don't think it's effective anymore. It's quite old. I think I got it in like 2014, 2015. I'll be taking it with me. It'll be pretty cold and I probably won't see any insects for quite a while, but I've always carried it with me, so maybe I'll continue. I might just put it in my resupply box with my first pair of shoes, just because there probably won't be any flying bugs. Yeah, I'll just bring it. For rain clothes, I have a Z-Pax Virtus pants. It's basically a super old one again, made 2016. And here it is. It's in blue. I don't think you can get blue anymore, but this is it. It's very light. And I can take my shoes on and off without having to take it off. And I can even do it while standing, so that's a huge bonus. So I just have to put my pack down, grab this from the back mesh area of my backpack. And I can just put it on, standing there, no problem. And this, mostly I wear because of wind, not really rain. Because once it rains, I don't really care too much. But wind is the huge one. If, if you're ever walking, it's just on a ridge or something and it's just windy. It's nice having a windproof shell over some other fabric like long pants that provides like a little cushion for the warm air to sit. And this helps amazingly, even in shorts. You could just wear this and it just makes it so much warmer than without, of course. Cause if it's windy and it's misty or raining, it definitely helps. I go on every trip with this, no matter what, everywhere. This little ball here is the Virtus, Z-Pax Virtus rain jacket. This also is from 2015. It's quite old. It's quite an old rain jacket. Uh, it'll probably wet through pretty quickly these days. I've worn it everywhere. I've had it on the PCT Arizona Trail, Wonderland Trail, everywhere. And I've worn it quite often. Amazingly, it still works excellently. The zippers work. I find it's relatively waterproof still, and it's definitely windproof. And another reason I wear this most of the time. If you have a nice cushion, like a fleece, put this on and it just keeps that warm air inside when it's windy or misty. And this will be basically my hiking jacket when it's freezing. I never hike with my puffy on unless it's just like some super duper cold, unbelievably cold. But with this on, I think I'm just going to layer this over and in the mornings, no matter how cold it is, I'll just hike with this. When it's cold, you'll hike really quickly because you need to warm up and you won't stop. You'll just keep going. So yeah, this will be my rain jacket and I don't even know what size it is. One reason I really like the Virtus is, well, it's light. It's super expensive, so I don't want to buy anything else, but it's a little longer too. So even, well, I guess I'm five, six with little wider shoulders, so it's a little long. So I don't need a rain kilt or anything if I'm just wearing shorts because it pretty much covers most of my shorts except a little bit, so rain jacket's super nice. Another reason I went with the Z-Pax rain pants years ago, although it was super expensive, is because every other place in the world at the time just sold rain pants, small, medium, large, extra large and all that. But I'm a little wider overall and I'm shorter. So a medium, if I wore something that fit my waist, it would just drag on the bottom where I'd have to fold it. But fortunately, Z-Pax made them in custom sizes. So I got a medium short and it's perfect. And so far so good. I don't even have any tape on this one. And this is what I'll bring with me. Another item I have to help fight the rain is REI rain mitts. Some people are really against them. Some people are okay with them. 
I found on the Arizona Trail, I really like them. They're, they are relatively waterproof, but even if they're not waterproof, it helps slow down the water from getting in. So if you have something else underneath, like normal gloves, it keeps the rain away from it for quite a while. And even if it gets soaks through, it's a little, it gets a chance to warm up. It's not like ice cold rain hitting it constantly. So I really like these, they're a good size. I hiked, I don't know how many miles wearing this and there seems to be no visible wear, but uh, we'll see how waterproof it is on the Arizona Trail. I won't wear these if it's just raining. I'll just wear them if it's like super cold and raining, like 40 and below or maybe even less, but they're pretty good. I like them a little roomy and I could wear my gloves and put them on and they work great. The only problem is then you can't work your phone or your camera because you don't have any fingers. So it's a little annoying, but uh, if you're not vlogging at all, it's no problem. You know, as long as you can see the blazes because then you don't have to use your phone at all. On the Arizona Trail, I found I wore gloves and the mitt, but on one hand, I would just wear the mitt and that was actually warm enough to keep my fingers functional. Uh, I just didn't want to have to take this off and then my glove off to operate the camera or the phone, but I'll be taking these with me as well. The gloves I'll wear underneath these are head gloves. They're just Costco brand gloves I bought like maybe 2012, 2010 long long ago they've been repaired twice from rips but they still work except the little touch things that are there don't work at all anymore they're just completely worn out but i'll continue wearing those so i'll have basically two layers of handwear but i have another layer yes convertible mittens yeah i i tried to look for warmer ones but this is the best i could find I decided to go to convertible mittens just because using a phone is just so much easier when you have your fingers. Like you don't need your thumb. You could do everything with your two fingers. And I found that using a camera is also a lot easier when you have your fingers. So I'm looking forward to using this on trail quite often. This does have a little suede bottom, so it absorbs some of the wear, but I don't expect this to last the whole through hike, I expect it to last through the first two months or maybe a month. But after that, that's okay if they're gone because these only cost about $15 from Amazon. Menards has a similar model for $10, but they didn't have my size. So I got these from Amazon. They're almost identical in the weave, but basically there's a Velcro back here and it just folds over and there's a little bit of liner inside and it keeps everything warm. One of the things on the Arizona Trail that I, I hated was my fingers would just get frozen every morning. It was like that. <laughs> um, when I broke down the tent, I didn't like to wear gloves because I didn't want my gloves getting all wet from the ice that was all over it. So I, or wear down the gloves from like pulling the stakes. But so I always did it barehanded and then I put everything away and I put the gloves on, but the gloves were never warm enough to warm up my fingers and it was just annoying with the liner trying to get it out to operate the cameras but with this it just it should make everything so much easier and it's so much warmer than the gloves and the other advantage is this does fit in that rei rain shell so when it's really bad i'll put it over it so it should be nice and waterproof and warm the only catch is of course i'm not gonna be able to operate the camera with the shell but if it's that bad it's probably gonna be too wet to film too much. And with the GoPro that just has a button on there so I could just, no problem. But cute, huh? On my original gear video, I had a different set of gloves. They were supposed to be ice fishing gloves, but they were so thin that I decided to go for the knit ones. The knit ones at least felt thicker, but uh, those were more expensive, but they were just so much, so thin. And I went for a walk in about 10 degree weather and my fingers were just way too cold, so. I opted for these and these are maybe a third of the cost. So it'd be a lot easier just to wear this down or leave it in the hiker box if it's, if I don't need it anymore. One item I'm thinking about not bringing at all and thinking about just leaving it in a resupply box with my shoes is something I'll need when it's a little warmer. It's just basically a buff. Everybody's seen these. It's just a piece of synthetic and it just goes over your neck. Some people sleep in them. I can't seem to sleep in them because 
couple hours in, it'll just feel like I'm it's I'm getting choked. So I'll take it off. So I don't like to sleep in these, and plus they're a little too thin in the winter time. So these will stay here until I get them shipped to me with maybe a new pair of socks at some point. But I've had these on almost every hike as well, so these are pretty good. I'm sure everybody knows what they are. When it's nighttime or it's really cold, I will wear this fleece beanie. It's just a cheap condor fleece beanie. Um, I don't know if it's the exact same. I tried to order another one just to replace this in case something happened. And it came much shorter than it. like it's stopped here. And I hate that. I prefer a long one because when it's a full moon, a couple of times I woke up and thought it was time to get going. So I prefer to just do that and go to sleep. And it's great. It's also helpful if someone in a shelter or something is shining lights turn on, but also it keeps your nose warm because you could pull it down to there. And this is how I, I slept on really, really cold nights. In place of the buff, I'm wearing this. It's basically a shema like thing. It's a square piece of merino wool by North by North and it's called a kerchief. It's, it's a little heavier. It's pretty solid. A shema has more of an open weave. Not super open, but a little open. But this is solid and you can just kind of bundle it and just stick it in your neck and just tie it. It's basically like a scarf then. Or what I do when I sleep is I usually toss it behind me and then wrap it around. And basically on the, on the back, I don't tie it or maybe I'll tie it to the side so it doesn't interfere with my pillow. But then you have a nice little cushioned, soft fabric around your neck and you could cinch your quilt down on it. Because everyone knows the fabric for a sleeping bag or a quilt is not that comfortable. So use merino wool like this and it just creates a nice seal and keeps the heat within the body. And of course your face will be warm so it's nice to have a hat to do this. But then all this will be warm. So here's what I do. If anybody's used a small before, you pretty much know this, but Basically, you just kind of fold it like this, fold it like this. And then just tie it on the side. And then you can pull this down. And then basically, that's it. It still wraps around your neck. So you could get your quilt in there. It's not as thick now, but you have a covering for your whole face so you won't freeze it all and that's it it's a lot it's a little crooked but you just wear your hat down and this is how I've slept when it's extremely cold where I can't have any skin showing Ugh, it's getting warm I prefer this over like the down hoods that people wear I actually bought one and the problem is if with the with the down hood if you cover cover your mouth with it this whole area is gonna get wet no matter what, it's just going to get wet and your down hood just going to get soaked right there and it's just going to get cold anyway. But I found with Greeno, at least when it gets wet, it helps, it kind of le like leaches out and it's wet on top. So it's not as bad and it still stays nice and warm and it's really soft. So I prefer this over those hoods, especially because the fabric, I mean, this is so much softer, but that's the gist of how I stay warm sleeping in a quilt because it has no head area. But it's quite flexible. You could do whatever you need with it. It's, it's just really warm. The only time I did wear this before was that when I went on a day hike when it was negative 10 Fahrenheit just to go look at bald eagles at Starved Rock. So, but it worked great. And the other advantage of this is if you have something else you can wrap around your neck, you can, if it's really cold, you can just drape it over your body and it's thick enough merino, it's definitely going to help. If you fold it in half, just drape it over, it'll keep your core warm, definitely. So multi-purpose. Also, as many people with shamas know, you can make a sling out of it if you want, if you hurt your arm or something. Or what I like to do is some people are, said that people carry their laundry around with them. What I do is just open it up, just put the laundry in it, and then fold the corners over, and I just carry it. <laughs> that's basically it's basically my laundry bag, and you just toss it all in the washer. Works for me, so I'll just keep doing it. 
But yeah, this is my North by North kerchief. Merino wool. It's not cheap, but it's so warm. Going down further to the feet now, I'll be using Dirty Girl Gaiters. Everybody knows about them. It's basically just a little sheet of fabric. It goes around your ankle, basically. It covers the top of the shoe, so as you walk, you don't get as much dirt and debris falling in. Normally on a day hike, I don't wear it because I can stop and empty my shoe. But when I'm through hiking, I will definitely wear these just because you just don't have time to stop every few miles to get rocks out of your shoes. It really, really does help keep everything out. On the PCT, after I finished, I went on another backpacking trip. And I, I hiked five miles without these, and there's so many rocks in my shoes. I was grateful that I had these. And this is our brand new. I had newer ones on the Arizona Trail, but I found that they only last a couple thousand miles. You'll start ripping holes in them. Every time you rub your feet accidentally, every time you take them on and off, when you stretch them, they wear out pretty quickly. And pretty much everyone's going to have duct tape on them by the <laughs> end of the trail, I'm pretty sure. And they're just, they're just a couple of them. They're pretty cheap, super light. Everyone has them for a reason. And it creates funky tan lines up, up high when you're wearing shorts. For shoes, I am wearing the A66 Venture 6. It's pretty much... Well, it is the exact same shoe I wore the entire PCT for a while after I was wearing the Venture 7s because I thought they stopped making the 6, maybe 7s were better, but as it turns out, the design of the 6 makes it so the shoe will stretch a little better on the side than the 7. The 7 has all these little plastic things going straight up, holding it down so it won't stretch at all, but this will stretch a little bit because there's a little give. So I'll be... Wearing sixes, I actually have five of these. So I don't expect to go through five, I expect to go through four. I'm gonna start with one. Inside, I have the Superfeet Green. I have been wearing these since 2004. Um, believe it or not, in Iraq, I don't know why, I had super painful sensations in the arch of my feet, both feet, especially in the morning when I stood up. That first time I stood up, it was torture stand there for a few seconds and that is plantar fasciitis it's not just like pain in the feet but when you wake up and you feel that that's a teller sign after weeks of going to the visit the internet cafe there because the internet was so slow and everybody was limited to 30 minutes i finally figured out what it was and then after another week or so i was finally able to get to amazon and order super feet because that that was the only insole that had art support that was wide and I have wide feet. So that was the only one I found, had good reviews, tried them out. A month later, they showed up in Iraq. US Postal Service delivery there just takes a long time. I put them in my desert combat boots and a few weeks later, everything was fine again. And ever since then, I've been wearing them all the time except when I was running because I preferred the normal ASICs. But for hiking, backpacking, I always wear the Superfeets because for some reason, they don't make extra wide shoes and stability anymore. If you are a long distance runner, you may know about this or maybe an older long distance runner because younger people don't have to care about it as much because it doesn't affect them. But stability shoes have more art support in there to help fight over pronation. But for some reason, all the extra wide feet that ASICS makes now are neutral, which are just flat. So there's barely any arch in there at all. So I need the super feet to give me that arch support as well as provide nice wide padding in there. Normal insoles, believe it or not, if I warm, I have done this before, I'll actually get hot spot along the edges because they're too narrow. So it's the reason I wear these. It's not because it's trendy or anything. It's it's only one that works. There's only one other brand that works for me, but super feet it is. To work with the gaiters from Dirty Girl, I have Velcro strips glued into the back of my shoes. As you can see, Velcro strips. I glued them onto all my shoes already because the adhesive that these come with are not effective enough. As soon as they get wet, they'll come off and you'll see people with the gaiters hooked on the front and the back just flapping around. 
especially if you're going to walk in snow, these will come right off within days easily. And what I do is I just take super glue gel and I apply it to the back. It's already adhesive, but I apply the super gel to it. I don't use the normal super glue because I find it just runs off and makes a mess. So I use super glue gel and I just tape them. I just glue them on. I round out all the corners and I just glue them on and they've never come off when I use super glue. But still, I carry a little tube of super glue gel with me on trail because once you're on trail, you're limited to what you find. And I found that on the PCT I bought one, I was like a big one and I carried that with me for a while. So I like to carry the little one that I do have now in case I need it and I have it. And it's super light and uh, I'm sure everyone says that about every little thing people carry. It's super light, it's okay. But I need it because I don't like when the gaiters come off and then dirt and stuff falls in the back of your shoe. Yeah, so these are my shoes and insoles and Velcro for the AT. I expect to go through about four, four pairs of shoes, I think. They generally last about 600, 700 miles for me, so. Another shoe item I bring with me that's also controversial are camp shoes. Now these are Birkenstock, I believe they're Madison. I'll put the description up here. But I, I've always carried camp shoes and it's not just for camp. A lot of people are foregoing them. They're nice in camp because you can pop them on real quickly if you need to run out and do something, come back. But the big benefit is in town. It's just nice to wear something else instead of shoes to let your feet air out. And if you go to hostels and you're going to shared showers, you want to wear something on your feet. Even if they're just the thin rubber flip-flops, you want to wear something, something light. And these are very light. Uh, they feel really light. I wish they were wider so they wouldn't have to be so short or so long because <laughs> they just go all the way up on my heel. But again, camp shoes, don't think about it as it just for camp use. It's for town as well as public showers. Like you go to a campground, do you really want to take a shower in there with without anything on your feet? I, I wouldn't. But yeah, camp shoes are for me. And I'm not gonna go do any rare crossings with this or anything. I'm just wearing my shoes. These are specifically to wear at camp. These will just, if they fall off, they'll float away like nothing. They're light and they, they aren't on that tightly. So, but I will be bringing these with me on trail. And the last of my clothing items is the Enlightenment Equipment Torrid. <laughs> is it? Puffy, it's a synthetic jacket. I bought this also in 2016, 2017. I also bought the Ghost Whisperer. Is it Ghost Whisperer? No, that's a TV show. Mountain Hardware, Ghost something. Anyway, yeah, it's, yeah, it's not the TV show I'm talking about. But basically I preferred this because they're about the same weight. I found this to be a little warmer. I think because of the synthetic, they're in sheets across the body. So there aren't like little empty spots of down. They're just sheets sewn in. So it just evenly spread out across the entire thing. And it just works incredibly well. I'm really jealous of all the people that are getting the new models because the first year, for some reason, they made the wrist so tight. Like, I think only women could wear this, but that's, really annoying but other than that it's a little dirty I haven't washed it yet <laughs> since but uh, it works great it's warm light and when I get to camp if it's cold and I set up my tent I'll generally put this on to help maintain the heat that I already have before I set it up and I'll wear this in the morning until I'm ready to go generally I'll keep it on as I pack everything up and right before I go I'll take off my rain jacket and I'll put this into my pack, usually on the top, unless it's raining. If it's raining, I'll shove it into the compactor bag liner I have. But I usually shove it in there, close it up, and then put on the rain jacket and I just go. I never hike with this because I don't want to wear it out. And it's just my last resort of warmth. Also when I sleep though, if it's really cold, I'll keep it near me or inside my quilt. So as it gets colder throughout the night, I'll often pull it up and then pull it over my body like this, just to help me stay warmer. I've done that many, many, many times. I probably won't wear it anymore, but I'll just pull it over my body. Generally, I'll just pull it over any way I can. 
I don't try to think it through too much. Any way that covers my body, I'll just pull it. But yeah, so this is the Torrid Apex. Everyone has it and uh, everyone knows about it. And they're super nice. The other reason I prefer this over to down is you never get feathers poking out. Never get that. The quilt, I've had one feather, but this, there are no feathers in there. So. Yeah, it's a great little jacket. And that's the complete rundown of every bit of clothes I'm bringing with me on the trail. It's not what most people would bring. I don't have any base layers or anything like that. I did have a merino base layer on the PCT. I wore it once and I was way too warm. And it was, got down to at least 19, 15. It was just before Forrester Pass. I just cowboy camped out there and I was just too warm. So I don't, I feel like with this, I don't need any base layers, even down to teens, low teens, I'll be perfectly fine. I'll pull with the sleeping bag liner. I'll pull the puffy over me if it's colder. I could probably get into single digits and I'll just be fine. So I'm not worried about it at all. The Arizona Trail has taught me a lot about how I sleep and what's good for me. And this amount of clothes is all I really need. The only thing I really needed to change was my fingers. So my fingers were so cold and I did get, or I did decide to wear this fleece because I knew it was gonna be cold for a lot longer on this trip. So. Yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask below. This is my clothes. And yeah, I'll be sleeping and hiking in the same clothes every day, just like I've done on it. thousands of miles and hundreds of nights. So sounds gross, but uh, believe it or not, my sleeping pad is actually, my old one was pretty clean because I use little towels and completely wet myself down each night. It's not bad. and I. Use two, so I wipe down my legs, my arms, my face, in the opposite order. Legs are last because they always get dirty, but pretty much all the private areas, sweaty areas, and just go to sleep. And it works out. And my quilt has been freshly washed. It's very effective and puffy now, so not too worried. It's gonna be a great experience. So, yeah, what do you think of my clothes? You think I'm crazy? You think I'm gonna? die, I think I'm going to quit or wind up buying base layers at the first uh, mountain hardware store. That's at like mile 30 something at Neil's Gap. I don't know. I think I'll be fine. And I think, I think I'm looking forward to it. In fact, I've been deciding whether I should wear long pants or shorts on my first day when I leave Amicalola. Cause if it's going to be high forties, that's shorts weather, high forties going up. That's shorts and a long sleeve t-shirt. This I will be sweating in. Decisions, decisions. But it would be fun to get to Springer wearing shorts in January. <laughs> but don't take my word for it. Or yeah, maybe you'll have to watch my videos to see whether that actually happens. But thanks for watching and I will talk to you all later. Next video will be about all the gear I haven't gone over yet. So the miscellaneous items, first aid kit, poop kit, um, some other rain related items that aren't closed. And start date is very, 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 very soon. So you all have a good night and I'll talk to you all later.